Hey guys, Derek Craig here with oilfieldbasics.com. Today we're asking the question of why on earth are there so many pump jacks? And again, this is something that, especially if you live in Appalachia, uh, which is where it's where Marietta College is, it's where my home is, uh, I'm very accustomed to this area, they're literally everywhere. Um, and so, and across the US too, again, depending on where you're at <laughs> geographically, if there's any oil reservoirs or you know any, any type of production at all, uh, typically you're going to see a lot of per pump jacks. So why are there so many of them? Well, one of the key reasons is because there's just so many wells. There's that many wells across the U.S. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably clear across the U.S. Um, literally, there, a lot of them are on conventional wells. So a lot of the conventional wells typically have need artificial lift. So artificial lift is basically a way of helping a well produce its liquids or its production, um, really just manually helping a well so that it can produce better. So one of the dominant forms of artificial lift is a pump jack, as you can see behind me. So a pump jack literally is connected from the surface, uh, downhole all the way with rods that literally work up and down as the horse, as, as the pump jack itself actually articulates and, and pivots and, and pumps. It's actually connected all the way to the bottom of the well um, essentially at that reservoir uh, with a pump. So there's a pump downhole that's literally stroking up and down uh, with the pump jack and that is helping to lift fluid to the surface. So this is literally done because a well uh, is not strong enough to physically lift the liquid to surface itself uh, based on the difference in pressure. So as you produce a well, um, your, pres your pressure is going to go down. So your reservoir pressure is going to go down. You're just, you're just taken out of it. So your pressures are going to decrease. And if that well was strong enough to begin with, uh, to where it could lift its fluid out of the well, uh, you're going to encounter a scenario where it can't no longer lift as much as it needs to lift so it doesn't die off. So essentially, um, a well can literally like flood itself out. So the reservoir only has so much pressure behind it. And if it's trying to produce liquid into a well and then lift that liquid to surface uh, just based off of its flow rate, um, eventually it's going to become weak enough that it can't literally lift all the liquid to surface. And then as soon as that begins to happen, the liquid is going to fall back and it's going to build up in that well. And then you're going to have to introduce some form of artificial lift to help it. Uh, when that liquid builds up in that well, you're essentially adding back pressure to the well. Uh, this is hydrostatic pressure, so you just have a column of fluid literally sitting up on top of your reservoir uh, in the well. So it's essentially holding back pressure on the reservoir so it can't produce as well. So that's why you run something like a pump jack in order to help keep the liquid off of the well, help bring it to surface manually. Um, other options include a plunger lift system. Uh, you can do gas lift depending on what type of well, how, how much rate and whether or not that's economical, that gets pretty expensive. Um, but overall pump jack is pretty much the go-to uh, across the US for conventional wells. So it, it's extremely common. So parts aren't at all hard to get. Um, most of the time these wells will fall within a production range that uh, these pump jacks will be able to keep up with and help help with. Um, if you have a very high producing rate, like if you're talking about some of the unconventional wells nowadays, um, for example, Eagleford or Permian Basin, you have a lot of oil and a lot of liquids, uh, they might even do something like a gas lift system. And that's a whole other video itself. But again, this is just a form of artificial lift to help lift the fluids out of the well. So even whether, even a gas well um, will sometimes need a pump jack. Um, it depends on if the amount of gas it's producing is going to be worth the investment to keep a pump jack running. Because to keep a pump jack running, obviously there's a lot of moving parts on a pump jack. Um, the unit itself is decently expensive, not, not incredibly expensive for a conventional well like this where it's small scale. Um, but still everything has to be worth it economical, economically. Another reason pump jacks are so popular is because it helps the well achieve the lowest bottom hole pressure. So without getting too crazy deep into it, basically, again, you have a pump literally sitting down hole, usually right around the perforations, usually a little bit above or, or a little bit below the perforations and literally lifting liquid from there up. So basically from around the perfs, there's, there shouldn't be any hydrostatic pressure sitting on your formation. Uh, with a pump jack. So because you have the lowest bottom hole pressure, uh, that's going to help your well produce better. So your well is fighting less, so it's able to produce better. 
So this is another reason that pump jacks are so prevalent across the United States. All right, so if you wanna see a little bit more about how they work or the setup of a conventional well site, the rest of this well pad, uh, check out our other videos. We appreciate y'all viewing us. Um, please be sure to drop us a like, comment, subscribe, uh, send this email, share it. Um, also, if you're more interested in learning more about oil and gas or operations, typically, you know, how this well was drilled, permitted, et cetera, check out our courses, oilfieldbasics.com. We appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.